Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Lukas Shishmish, but you can leave out accents and just uh, call me Lukas. Uh, I'm a researcher at Cessnat primarily, but uh, I'm also a PhD student and newly a team member of Suricara. Uh, in my work, I primarily focus on accelerating Suricata with BPDK. So today I would like to tell you more about uh, what Suricata actually is, then tell you the state of DPDK in Suricata, uh, how we use the DPDK in Suricata, and then uh, present DPDK pre-filters as uh, an alternative to uh, even further accelerate Suricata using DPDK. All right, uh, so what is Suricata? Uh, Surigata is a community-driven, meaning open source software, which uh, monitors uh, networks by extracting uh, application layers, I mean events from application layers, uh, which could mean that it extracts uh, HTTP logs, uh, it extracts TLS keys, uh, I mean it's payloads uh, from HTTP, let's say and uh, logs it to a central place. Then it does uh, signature-based uh, packet analysis, which means you have set of some rules, which you, and they are used to inspect uh, the passing through packets. Uh, Sturikata can be uh, as a passive receiver, meaning uh, it re receives only copies uh, from, from the network and doesn't interrupt the traffic flow itself, which is called the IDS setup, intrusion detection system. It can read PCAPs, or it can be directly uh, placed in the wire and inspect uh, the, all the traffic uh, that's passing through, and that's an uh, intrusion prevention system. This intrusion prevention system then can uh, have rules to block the actual passing through traffic. By default, it has uh, the general GPL v2 license by OSF. That's the organization behind the uh, actual Surigata. To have a better idea where we can play Surigata is uh, well, you, will, you are usually a network administrator, which you manage uh, some network and you place it within that network. And uh, you either place it, as a, place it there as an IDS setup or IPS, so that's uh, up on you. And <clears throat> from Suricata, you then have uh, outputs for, uh, um, like I said, uh, from the app layer events, meaning the network security monitoring application. Then it analyzes packets uh, with uh, signatures. It can extract the payloads. Uh, based on rules, it can, uh, for instance, uh, record uh, PCAPs of uh, when some condition is triggered for, uh, to, to be able to analyze the traffic uh, later on. Uh, Surikara itself has multiple uh, modules uh, which it consists of. Uh, as you can see on the right hand image, uh, you have packet capture module, packet decoding module, de detection and output module. But for DPDK, uh, mostly the most interesting module is the packet capture module of course. Uh, it already contained a uh, few modules like uh, AF packet and FQ, PF ring, uh, and some others as well. And uh, part of my uh, master thesis, I implemented the uh, DPDK capture module. Uh, it's been already uh, merged in the in the main branch, and uh, will be already uh, part of Suricata 7.0 release, which is due to be soon. But uh, that can be already uh, Surigata can be al or already compiled with this uh, capture module. The, the 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 module I implemented it works in a primary process mode, um, and uh, 
part of my Suricon talk uh, about this implementation, I made a performance graph, which, uh, as you can see, um, was presented on a Suricon conference. The horizontal line uh, describes the transmit speed, and the uh, vertical lines uh, describes a um, percentage of dropped packets, meaning uh, how many packets were drop versus a uh, number of transmitted packets. Uh, the measurement uh, had two um, variants. Uh, the blue line basically describes uh, the most popular uh, capture module, which is uh, the AF packet, the most used one. And the orange line described the DPDK. Uh, there were uh, 16, 16 threads of Suricata running on each. Uh, test case, and uh, as you can see, uh, the DPDK outperformed uh, AF packet. From my measurement, it output, outperformed or helped uh, Suricata by about uh, 15, 10 to 15 percent, the increased uh, throughput. By other measurements, I uh, I was able to to see and heard from other community members that uh, BBDK also improved uh, latency quite a bit. So uh, currently, uh, DPDK in Suricata um, provides uh, support for, for primary process mode, which means uh, and was tested um, by me mainly on uh, physical NICs running on physical machines. I didn't try it in virtual functions and and stuff like that, but so far it was, uh, I'm keeping it physical. But uh, then I implemented the capture module, but then we were like, what's the, what are the next steps? So usually you can either improve the processing speed of the actual application of Suricata, or limit the amount of traffic passed to Suricata. Uh, with this in mind, uh, we came up with uh, DPDK pre-filters, which is, uh, let's say, architecture in DPD, new architecture in DPDK environment, uh, where we use uh, primarily uh, the features of DPDK as, such as uh, primary and secondary process, where we have uh, some DPDK pre-filter in front of Suricata that uh, can filter the in incoming traffic which means uh, the traffic that uh, we are passing through Suricata uh, might be filtered even before Suricata knows about it. So you can, let's say, insert a rule uh, to the DPDK prefilter to only f filter traffic from this IP prefix. And Suricata doesn't really know, doesn't really need to know about this. Then it can also provide a synchronous uh, flow-based bypass and that's driven by Suricata. So Suricata inspects some flow and uh, tells it tells DPDK prefilter, I don't want to see this flow anymore, and DPDK prefilter will handle this. Or DPDK prefilter or Nick can add metadata to packets that's, uh, that are passing through uh, these uh, systems, basically. I have, I have this uh, in a and in diagram as well. Uh, if, we, if we look at the diagram, we see uh, on the very left, the NIC that's receiving packets. And then uh, it leads, uh, there is an arrow of a uh, packet leading to the DPDK prefilter, which uh, basically receives packets of all the NICs that it uh, works with. And this DPDK prefilter um, is running as a primary process, which means that uh, Suricata must run basically as a secondary process. And that means uh, that requires uh, us to implement the secondary support. So Suricata now has already secondary support. Uh, the, this, uh, this connection was done using DPDK rings. Uh, which which means that uh, Suricata does not need to bother bother with uh, setting up uh, the devices itself, 
and only connect to the, or attach to the DPDK rings. So this, this work uh, also provides stable vendor neutral DPDK ring API, which uh, uses Suricata to get packets. And uh, as you can also see, uh, Suricata can also output packets. Uh, that's for IPS setups. So uh, that's also supported in this work. Uh, and at the last point in this uh, diagram, we see that it supports non-blocking bypass stats update. Uh, when Suricata tells FreeFilter that I don't want to see this flow anymore, it still wants to see how active the flow is. And if, if it's still active, it, it wants to get at least uh, the stats of the, of the flow. So it periodically asks the PDK prefilter for for these uh, statistic, and that's through the uh, bypass channel that you see in the middle between the PDK prefilter and Suricata. Uh, now you also see the meta fields there, and that's uh, that's basically support for metadata that can. Uh, improve the processing speed uh, of Suricada itself or other parts of the whole architecture. Uh, basically, the, the bypass method or the filtering method help to limit the amount of traffic passed to Suricada, but metadata actually uh, supports uh, or are supposed to improve processing speed uh, of Suricada to to reach uh, better performance. Now, you see that uh, Nick of can add metadata to the packet, but the uh, DPDK prefilter might uh, have different heuristics to add different metadata to the packet itself. So that's why uh, on the packet between DPDK prefilter and Suricada, uh, it might contain a little bit different metadata than uh, uh, what are passed from the NIC itself. Uh, we can take, uh, for example, DPDK prefilter might contain some machine learning module, which could uh, add another set of uh, metadata to the packet itself. And then when Suricata is finished with the detection and sends packets uh, back to the DPDK prefilter, it might also can, it might also want to add metadata on the way to the prefilter so that the metadata are used by prefiltered to better, uh, to improve, let's say, uh, the machine learning mod module. Since uh, Suricata are, is able to run as a secondary module, uh, there are uh, also other use cases for uh, how, how these uh, DPDK applications could be set up. Uh, for, Apart from the usual, uh, the, the basic module, uh, the basic uh, deployment architecture, let's say, that's uh, pretty straightforward, it can basically read data or packets uh, from different application that's before the Suricata, and then pass it to the other application through the PDK rings as well. Or uh, the PDK prefilter might serve as a it's a kind of distributor between uh, Suricata and uh, other application uh, that would basically use another uh, features uh, of DPDK so that packets don't need to be copied to these different uh, applications and only uh, are read by both applications. Uh, this could this basically means that within one server you can have multiple DPDK applications that are connected uh, together. But so far we primarily focus on this uh, simplified concept with uh, only Suricata and DPDK prefilter to reach the highest throughput we can. So uh, I've presented uh, the whole concept here. But uh, what's currently implemented and what's uh, in progress uh, is summarized in this slide. Basically, the DPDK prefilter and uh, Suricata itself needs to kind of synchronize together 
And for that, uh, we have uh, inter-process communication. The, we use the DPDK IPC API to, let's say, to for Surigata to attach to the pre-filter, to uh, tell pre-filter that I, I want to stop receiving packets and so on. Then uh, you need to also share configuration between Surigata and uh, pre-filters as pre-filter initializes all the stuff and uh, basically it uh, passes down the resources to Surigata. And then uh, pre-filter, although uh, it is shown in this diagram as uh, in one-to-one -one ratio, DPDK pre-filter can be, uh, can work as a single core and distributing to multiple Suricata workers. And on DPDK pre-filter, one core of DPDK pre-filter can work with multiple NICs as well, uh, the multiple ports of, of the NIC. Which means that the, the cost of DPDK pre-filter or adding another core to the overall architecture is um, basically amorti amortized uh, over the whole uh, architecture. Uh, the packet distribution works in, as I mentioned, in IDS and IPS mode. And there are by message channels between uh, Surigata and Prefilter to exchange messages for the asynchronous bypass, for the uh, bypass update, and, and so on. Uh, What's, uh, what's left to be done is uh, are the packets metadata in which uh, we would improve uh, Suricata's uh, processing speed. But that's to be planned also to be stored within the RTM of. So here it might be, it might be a little bit more uh, complex uh, view on the overall architecture. As you can see that you have uh, one pre core which distributes traffic to uh, multiple Surikata workers, that's, uh, that's SW, uh, and uh, these, these workers basically are the ones that uh, process all the packets and uh, go, uh, go through the detection analysis. From all the threads, you have message rings, which can uh, basically mean that uh, these threads can uh, send messages that I want to bypass this flow, and so I don't need to see it anymore. And uh, flow manager, when the flow is uh, bypassed, uh, sends message to the uh, task ring or to the pre-filter to get new statistic about uh, bypass. Because the, even even though the by, uh, even the flow is bypassed, it's still stored in the circuit of flow storage. And then uh, when prefilter uh, gets the information that Suricata wants uh, based on the message it received, then uh, prefilter basically responds to the flow manager assistant, which uh, sets the correct uh, let's say. Uh, statistic of the bypass flow uh, in the uh, in the flow storage of uh, Surigata. In the in the upper layer, we see the inter-process communication for synchronizing states between the two systems, and we also see the configuration mem zone uh, memory zone for sharing the initialized resources. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is uh, only one NIC displayed, but the DPDK pre-filter can actually work uh, with two, let's say, ports, so that it works in the IPS mode as well. Uh, here are the kind of responsibilities of one pre-filter core, basically what, what it does uh, in, it, in its uh, one cycle, and that's uh, receiving packets of, uh, let's say, both NICs, bypassing uh, packets, uh, distributing packets among uh, Suricata workers, and, uh, and getting messages, and that's uh, dequeuing uh, task ring, processing these messages and replying to Suricata, basically. Uh, this, uh, this architecture, as I said, uh, is already kind of uh, implemented. And uh, I 
I did some early uh, tests on how, how it's doing. And uh, I, for, for test, I used Suricata machine that had uh, Intel Xeon. Uh, I, my setup was based only on one Numado, so I only used uh, one of the CPU. I used um, NVIDIA Konak X5 card for, for this test. And um, basically there were uh, eight Suricata workers enabled. Uh, the replay PCAP, uh, was had average packet size of 750 bytes, and uh, it was replayed at the different speeds to to see how how it uh, how Surika and uh, how how the whole system behaves basically. Uh, we see the first graph, which uh, as I mentioned has eight Surika workers uh, enabled, so there were eight threads uh, receiving packets. This was. Uh, both, and this was a comparison between the standalone DPDK Suricata, that's a red line, and a DPDK pre-filter plus, plus Suricata, Suricata that's, a, that's the new architecture. And basically the standalone Suricata is the, well, as, as you might have seen, uh, the most perform, performant, I would say, um, capture module for, for Suricata, and that's why I, I chose uh, I chose this uh, variant basically. And uh, in this graph we see the horizontal line which describes the transmission speed and uh, the vertical line uh, describes the percentage of uh, received packets. And uh, this graph basically shows that uh, both variants um, start to lose uh, or start to, to drop packets at, at let's say about uh, the same uh, speed, uh, even though the pre-filter variant uh, is a little bit better. But this is basically uh, because Suricata, in this case, in this uh, test case, was uh, was, uh, was running with uh, emerging threads open. That's a rule set which is uh, publicly available. It's quite big and quite heavy for Suricata. But uh, it doesn't contain many, many bypass rules. Uh, Suricata basically, with this rule set, inspects still most of the traffic. There are instances uh, where Suricata might uh, trigger bypass by itself, but uh, it wasn't set up like this. So in this test case, was was mostly uh, focused on just uh, receiving packets and proving that uh, DPDK pre-filter doesn't really worsen the uh, actual performance, and, but it's only there. But the main uh, help in this architecture is basically in uh, when, when you bypass a lot of packets. In this use case, I also use the merging threads open rule set, which was quite heavy, but I also added uh, two rules which uh, uh, which bypassed encrypted TLS uh, 1.2 traffic when it was encrypted. So at, the, at this point uh, when the traffic uh, is encrypted, Surika doesn't really know or are not, is not able to do much more than to receive and uh, dump the traffic anymore. So uh, these rules were able to trigger the bypass. And it shows that the red line, where, which describes the standalone DPDK Surikara, uh, reaches uh, 8. Point, let's say 8 gigabits per second on eight Surikara workers, while the architecture with DPDK pre-filter reaches uh, 11.6 gigabits per second. And that's uh, close to three gigabits uh, improvement, which is quite a lot on eight cores. Uh, to to see how how big improvement it is, uh, I've also recalculated these numbers to per L core basis, and that's shown in this graph, where the 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 blue uh, the blue uh, column describes the standalone Suricata, and the red column describes the DPDK pre-filter with the Suricata. Uh, the, 
The vertical axis describes the, uh, well, the speed per core, and uh, where standalone Suricata used eight cores, and DPDK Prefilter Plus Suricata used in total nine cores. So this was taken into consideration, but still, uh, even though the the red, uh, the DPDK Prefilter used one core more, uh, it still provides 15% increase in uh, performance, which uh, sounds really, really nice considering uh, compared to AF Becker, the PDK alone proved 15% uh, increase, and then this also uh, brings another 15%. But I mean, on different use cases, it can bring even more or less. It depends on the on the use case as well. Uh, this was a kind of short intro and to give you an overview. <clears throat> but uh, if you walk away from this room, I will be happy if, if you remember that Suricata is basically an engine that uh, either monitors network traffic and uh, it extracts uh, the application layer events, uh, it locks uh, what's happening on the network analyzes packets against uh, the set of rules, and already contains DPDK. So you can also start experimenting with Regatta. And uh, the new architecture, DPDK Prefilter, provides uh, the new DPDK ring API so that uh, Regatta does not need to be bothered with uh, RSS configuration, which we know it's uh, different uh, between devices uh, other types of configuration which might be a li little bit hard uh, to maintain for Suricata. Uh, it can also provide synchronous traffic bypass so that it doesn't need to really lock or stop at anything. It just uh, sends message to the DPDK prefilter and ask for for update of the bypass flow. And it uh, also provides custom metadata uh, that will hopefully soon be implemented and we will test it out how, how it works. Lucas, I have a, we have a question here from our lead maintainer, Tomas. Huh? So, just thank you and uh, I would like to just uh, tell that I would be happy to see you all at Suricon in Athens this year. I would like to thank you, my faculty, Cessna and Suricata team for, for the support. And the last slide was, uh, is our, uh, contains all the links uh, that you might be interested. DPDK Prefilter, uh, which is currently in version four and in my, on my branch. The Suricon talk from the last year and Suricon, uh, this year's Suricon's page. All right. I'm happy to answer any yes. questions and we'll be happy for feedback. Yes, please. Um, why the Prefilter you using I don't understand the idea of filter. I do understand, but why use Ring and not RTE flow, basically? Uh, why is Regatta not using RTE flow? No, why are you using Rings? Why Rings and not RTE flow? Uh, I mean, I think RTE flow is a hardware acceleration, whereas we wanted to have a place in front of Regatta that's uh, easy to modify, and you can basically uh, put any kind of experiment within the DPDK pre-filter and not worry about Suricata code base, because it might often get uh, quite complex. And uh, that's why we wanted to put kind of just a layer between the NIC itself and Suricata. And uh, DPDK pre-filter can then either manage uh, their kind, their own kind of uh, offloads uh, or uh, filtering bypass, and if it wants to use uh, the RT flow, then uh, Suricata just can send a message, and DPDK prefilter will take care of that. Basically, you are. let me re rephrase my questions. DPDK prefilter, okay, but you don't need the ring between the DPDK prefilter to Suricata. You don't need RT rings, that's what I'm saying. DPDK prefilter can do everything that you said, that's okay. But you can use RT flow instead of rings. Uh, Query the queues. 
Yeah. Yeah. Do you mean like uh, the DPDK pre-filter would uh, configure the RT flow to receive packets, uh, or would, would uh, the DPDK pre-filter would configure RT flow to to forward packets from RT the DPDK pre-filter to Suricata? No, directly from. So the pre-filter basically will do send traffic that the Suricata wants from the NIC to RSS queue on the Suricata. So instead of the Suricata pulling on software queues, it will work on hardware queues. That's the only difference. Mm, yes. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm just thinking, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, a different question. Uh, so first, thank you for working on Suricata. That's a very old story. Uh, yeah. That's a very old story to have DPDK on Suricata. I know that other before you tried, and the maintainer were not satisfied with the result. So, are you working with the maintainer to make sure it will in, it will be integrated? Correct. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm uh, newly a Suricata member itself within the team. So I'm closely working with the Suricata team to. Uh, maintain basically the PDK within Suricata. Okay, great. So you are going to maintain this part in Suricata yourself. You are committed. Yeah, I'll, it looks like I will be the main maintainer so far of the DPDK. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, Another question regarding the forwarding between the various stages you showed on, I think it was the next slide. Yeah, exactly there. So you said that you use DPDK IPC there, um, but I mean, you have a lot of limitations when using uh, DPDK IPC, and why not simply integrate everything in, a, in the Suricata application itself and use a plugin infrastructure there, but then running everything in the same process? Um. I mean, from my point of view, the IPC didn't, I didn't see uh, IPC limitations, and I just wanted to use it for uh, synchronizing states. It's not used in uh, when packets are received, it's not used uh, when uh, messages are exchanged, but uh, I just, the IPC is just a general platform to uh, let's say, attach Suricata to the existing pre-filter or to the existing application and it's not like performance oriented. But in the end, so if I got it right from the documentation, you have to disable um, Linux kernel address layout randomization to make that work. I'm not sure if that's still valid. I mean, I didn't need to disable Please, I don't think I had to okay. disable anything. It worked out of the box, basically. Okay, thanks. Yeah, one question is, um, so DPDK recently introduced the regex tape, the regular expression device. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could offload that to Suricata if, if that's an option, so that we can offload some of the regex pattern matching to hardware. Just as such. Exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, we also have uh, in mind that putting pattern matching in inside a DPDK pre-filter would be quite nice. I mean, you still have uh, some problems with uh, reassembling and uh, the pattern between in between packets, but we'll try to, to solve it in some way and uh, implement this uh, regular expression matcher inside the pre-filter. Thank you. Well, thanks. So, um, I have a question. So, basically, um, do you also need, so, the when the DPTK filter receives the packets, it attaches a new metadata to the packet, right? That these are information required to Suricata, I guess, to process the packets. Uh, I'm sorry, can you maybe... Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit on the uh, sound side. Okay, now I was saying, after that TPDK filter receives the packets, I can see that there is a meta PF packet, so you have to attach a new subset of metadata to the packet to Suricata. 
to make Suricata work on the packet you just received? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that would be allocated probably the private space for uh, an RTM buff of uh, fixed size, and uh, DPDK prefilter could uh, take the meta information of the NIC and I'll maybe alter the the meta information what's what uh, what are said by the NIC and insert their uh, meta information prior to sending it sending the packet to Surikara. Okay, so basically the DPDK filter somehow has to process the packets and work on pack multiple packets coming in from the network card before providing them to Surikata. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As, it, as it is doing the bypass, it needs to basically do the five-tuple parsing at least, or whatever you configure on how you want to bypass packets. But uh, it uh, so far it, uh, it processes all the packets, and those packets which are not bypassed are then sent to the Surika then. Those packets what are bypassed are either discarded or, I mean, freed or are sent to the other interface on, on which they were uh, received in case of IPS mode. Okay, now because I was curious to see if there's some, some room for the GPUs either in Suricata itself for the analysis of the packets for security and inferencing or in the DPDK filter analyzing multiple packets um, in parallel. But maybe we can discuss this offline. All right. Lucas, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today and talk about uh, the intersection between uh, Suricata and DPDK. Thank you it's very great much. Great to have you.